ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ولا اعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وحده في ذاته ووحده في صفاته واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه في الدين بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار عباد الله اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عباد الله اتقوا الله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وبعد فقد قال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سوره الانبياء بعد عبود الله من الشيطان الرجيم وما ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين صدق الله مولانا العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام and as you all know this is the month of ربيع الاول this is the month the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born and it behooves the muslims to commemorate his legacy and remember him in such dire times the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as allah testified himself regarding his exemplary character wa innaka la'ala khuluqin azim وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You stand on this high standard of character, on that exalted standard of character, O Prophet, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why we talk about his life, his legacy. Not just because he is our Prophet or the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but because he is our example. He is our role model. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ كُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Indeed, in the person, in the messenger of Allah, there is a good example. So the idea is to recap, to learn more about the character of the Prophet, how he was sent as a mercy to the world, and how we as followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, must have those traits and those characteristics must have the attitude of Muhammad and how he behaved. According to Ali radiallahu anhu, he described him in the following words, he says in terms of giving. And please, you know, when I relate this, it's not just relating something that, you know, we are recounting his legacy, but rather to look into ourselves and see what of what I will be sharing with you we are doing and praise Allah for that and where we are short and uh, pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, give us the, the uh, ability to fulfill and to do what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did because he is the best of all humanity that has set foot on this earth. So Ali radiallahu anhu he describes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this uh, way, in this way. In terms of giving, the most generous of human beings. In terms of his chest, the most broad-chested of human beings. In terms of linguistic, the most righteous of human beings. In terms of keeping his promise, 
the most loyal of human beings. His nature is the softest of all human beings. In terms of etiquette, the most honorable of human beings. Whoever saw him for the first time would be scared of him. Whoever chatted with him would love him. So this is according to Sunan Tirmidhi, uh, how Ali radiallahu anhu described the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah enable us to follow him in these different traits. Allahumma ameen. And uh, after he died, his wife Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers was asked, she was asked, how was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at home? They saw him out in the market, they saw him in the masjid, they saw him outside of his home, but they wanted to know how he was at home. So she answered, she said, he was happy to do his work himself. Though his friends were ready to do his works, he did not want them to do those things for him. While at home, he mended his clothes, his own clothes, he used to sew them. Swept the house, milked the goats, feathered the camels and fed them. Moreover, he mended his shoes and leaking water skins. Helped the servants and kneaded dough with them. He carried the food from the market himself. And when someone said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, let me carry them, he would reply, every believer should carry his own load himself if he can. So you can see how simple of a man he was. And this is something for us to learn these great, uh, the, the great attitude of the Prophet at home. He was not boss, he was not a dictator, he was not, he was humble, he helped, he shared in the chores of the house, he was a partner in the home. And so he lived a very simple life. Now, Omar radiallahu anhu, once when he entered uh, uh, his home, and you know, he was, the Prophet was married to Hafsa, so, when he entered the, the household of the Prophet he was sleeping. So he noticed certain things, you know, on the side, the water skin on that side. And he was careful not to make noise because the Prophet was sleeping. But then the Prophet arose from his sleep and uh, he looked at him and Omar started crying. And uh, the Prophet inquired, he said, why are you crying, O Omar? He says, well, the uh, Caesars of uh, Rome and the uh, Kisra of Persians have all these mansions and palaces and, and lavish places to, to sleep and uh, get comfort on. And look at you, you are the prophet of Allah. You are the messenger of Allah. If anyone deserved such a thing, it would be a messenger of Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he looked at him and he says, Oh Ibn al-Khattab, don't cry. The, and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shared a smile at him and he recited this ayah from Surah Al-Ankabud. وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْمٌ وَلَعْبٌ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ لَوْ كَانْ يَعْلَمُونَ He said, he quoted the ayah from Surah Al-Ankabud, uh, What is this life of this world? but amusement and play, pleasures of this world. But verily, the home and the hereafter, that is the life indeed, if they but knew. In other words, he says, we're not here for comfort. This is the abode of toiling. This is the abode of working hard. This is the abode, the abode not of resting. Resting will come when we go to the next life, Darul Baqa, the everlasting life. A paradise, Allahumma ja'alna min ahliha, Allahumma ameen. And then he made a remark to Umar radiallahu anhu, and he said, Do you not want, O Umar, this world to belong to them and the hereafter to us? So think about that. Think about that for a moment. So we learn from this that we should not really run after the dunya. There is an abode better than this life awaiting us. So let us do whatever we can to attain and earn that award, the award of Al-Akhara. You know, and the woman and people would find it strange really for the Prophet 
to be sitting eating on the ground and she would inquire she would say look at him he's sitting on the ground and eating like a slave and the prophet would smile and he will answer he says can't there be a better slave than me i am a slave of allah subhanallah look at this humility <coughs> and he was indeed and he took pride in that title being the abd the slave of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let me tell you one thing you know to attain that title you can attain any title here in this world say the master and the mister and the big and i don't know all these titles that make you feel good about yourself the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would feel good when people would call him muhammadun abdullah wa rasul and he said he says call me muhammad the slave of allah and then his messenger he used to take pride in that title and we are all about allah you know how Allah described the believers in the Quran? One time in Surah Al-Insan, Ibadullah. And in Surah Al-Quran, Ibadul-Rahman. If we can only attain that martaba, that, that status of being the abd of Allah, the abd of the most merciful, then it's over, that's it. And the Prophet used to take pride in that title indeed. And he would say, I eat like a slave, eats i sit like a slave sits because i am nothing but a slave he identified with orphans you know orphans used to be marginalized they used to be looked down upon because they didn't have fathers they, they were orphans and so with slave and poor people and he would uh, identify with every one of them and make them feel that he is like them and they are like him so and he loved, lived his life his whole entire life in this way indeed the prophet was sent as a mercy to the world and just to share with you a few examples that are related in his sirah for example uh, he was definitely most certainly very kind and very compassionate toward the believers all of them every prophet was given hard times and prophet muhammad sallallahu was no exception but even then he was extremely kind toward his companions and the quran attests it says لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَلَيْتُمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ there has certainly come to you a messenger from among yourselves Grievous to him is what you suffer. When he sees any of his companions going through hardships or distress, it affects him personally. Does that affect us when we see our brother or sister or family going through certain hardships? Do we have the same feeling toward our community members? This was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is our khutwa, he is our example. So, indeed, previous to him is what you suffer. He is concerned over you. And to the believers, is kind and merciful. Even, even toward his enemies. So now, after the election, we have some enemies, without a doubt, because you read care reports and you see how many incidents already occurred against you know muslims particularly muslim women subhanallah right how do you respond do you curse them do you uh, make dua against them <coughs> what do you do learn from the prophet sallallahu during the time of persecution they used to come to him companions because who likes to be persecuted and hurt physically or you know, being injured with these racial slurs and what have you. And they would ask the Prophet, Why don't you curse the polytheists? And what would he say? I was not sent to curse the people. I have been sent as mercy. I can't curse them. 
And we all know what happened in the incident of Atayf. Could there be any time in his whole entire life where he was the most distressed, when he was rejected by the people of Atayf for simply calling them to La ilaha illallah. That's it. La ilaha illallah. They did not want to hear this. They drove him out of the town. They pelted him with stones. And you can imagine how he felt. You can imagine how you would feel in a situation like this. So he left. And he was complaining to God. He did not curse these people. But we need sometimes to share our feelings with somebody. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to cry. It's okay to show those feelings. But who would he share his feelings with? His Creator God Almighty. And he would complain to him. And in the end he says, as long as you're not upset with me, I don't care. I don't care what happens to me. What happens? Allah sends Jibreel to him, alayhi salam. And he says, I have been sent with the angel of mountains. And the angel of mountains is given Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam the choice. He says, I've been sent to ask you. It's, it's your decision. If you want, I can bring these two mountains and, you know, collapse these two mountains over the people. Everyone will, will, will be killed because of how they treated you. What was the response of the Prophet wasallam? You know the story. He said, no, hey, no, no, don't do that. <coughs> maybe, maybe it's possible that in the future, somebody from their progeny, from their loins, will accept La ilaha illallah. And subhanAllah, Atayf was the first entire city to accept Islam later on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered, you know, his dua. So we go through times of distress, times of, you know, depression, times of, but we have someone to return to, Allah Almighty. But we should be having the character and the, you know, attitude of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to prevail. And we will prevail, inshallah ta'ala, because Allah is always on the side of the oppressed. If you can come close and have the brothers find the seat in the back, that would be good. So, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً بِالْعَالَمِينَ لِيَا نَحْسَنْ فِي بَتْ أَزَ الْمَرْسِي تُو دَ وَرْلْزْ And he was not only merciful to people, he was merciful to literally everything in this world. للعالمين to all the worlds including animals. Sometimes, you know, we put the animals. You know, animals have feelings. I'm sure you probably have seen a thirsty cat or maybe a thirsty dog, how they, you know, their face look so sad that they, they can't express themselves. Well, you can literally tell. One time the Prophet Sallallahu came to the place with the Ansar and he saw a camel literally crying, crying. Tears coming out of the camel's eyes. And as though the camel complaining to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he inquired, he says, who's the owner of this camel? Who's the master of this camel? One of the Ansar came out. And he says, don't you fear God in this camel that Allah has bestowed to you? You own this camel. 
he wiped his tears, the prophet wiped the tears of the camel, and he says, it's complaining to me, you keep it hungry and you overwork it. Fear God. SubhanAllah. One time, you know, he came in and he learned about some people taking two little chicks of a bird out. She just had the birds and probably kids or playing with them. And you can see, he could see the, the bird, you know, uh, uh, flapping its wings like crazy, like my kids, my kids, my kids. And he said, we turn those chicks back to its mother. SubhanAllah. Merciful. And that's how we should be. Kind, merciful, compassionate toward everything, including the environment. I don't know how many of you recycle. You should recycle. Because it's good for the environment. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, even if the day of reckoning comes and you see it happen before your very own eyes and you are planting a seedling, don't stop. Continue planting that seedling. And ironically, he used to say, he could have said anything, but why seedling? Because we need to plant so we can breathe, so it can produce oxygen for us, so we can keep the environment clean. He was merciful to everything. And as the hadith goes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had divided mercy into 100 parts. He kept 99 for himself and distributed one among all of his creation. And I dare say the maximum, the, the most of that 1% was given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the rest distributed among every other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we take pride that he is our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I'll leave you with this. If you truly love Allah and love the Messenger, then follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ وَفْرُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O Prophet, if you truly love Allah, follow him. Following him, not only in terms of how we dress and how we brush our teeth and how we walk and how we He's a, he was sent as a mercy to the world. Follow him. He was given the book to take people out of darkness into light. He brought the light of Islam, the dawn of Islam. Never before, no prophet before him was able to establish kingdom of heaven here on earth except him. We have his example. We have the book. We have the light, we have an huda, we have an nur. Fattabi'uni, follow me, yuhbubkum Allah. Allah will love you and he will forgive you your sins. And Allah indeed is forgiving, he is merciful. May Allah bestow his rahman upon all of us. Allahumma ameen. إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم أنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم أنك حميد مجيد اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اغفر لنا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات اللهم ألف بين قلوبهم واجمع ذات بينهم وثبت أقدامهم وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم وارحمنا برحمتك الواسعة يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة and inshallah tonight I will be here. Thank you so much for.